Mr. President, this is my review for you. Good day, my name is Joe. Today, I'll be going over Mr. President and how it plays, well, just how it plays. I know this is a board games for two channel and this box does say uh, one player, but this is a board game I own. Want to do a review? So let's see a little bit more uh, uh, what's in the game. So this game is a solo game where you'll be taking control of the president. Now you'll have actions you can do throughout the game uh, to display on these action sheets, but essentially you're trying to make sure you're the best president you can be and avoiding some of these conditions for auto loss. You know, if, if Iran or North Korea get their missile programs off and they go to war, or if, or if Russia and China uh, spread their influence too much, or there's too many rogue states, too many terrorists on the, on the big board, or your party relations just get too low and maybe you get uh, kicked out. So let's see a little bit more uh, about the game. So in Mr. President, this is a sprawling one-player game. Uh, there's a lot to it. I don't want to go throughout the whole thing, but essentially you're going to be taking the role as the president going through this turn sequence. Uh, you're going to begin the turn, maybe do your State of the Union, your, your economy impact. This is a role-playing s kind of game. It has a lot of Ameritrash elements, and I say that in a good way. It's American Ameritrash, hence the uh, the Mr. President, which means there's a lot of uh, events that may happen. You don't know when they're going to come, uh, random events, and there's a lot of dice rolling. Uh, for me, that's great, but for some who want a more solid war game, this probably isn't for you, but essentially this is a, a war game. Uh, where you're really going to be going through a lot of seeing what the the world is doing holding summits to the world trying to position some some troops over here there's almost two parts of the game you know the diplomatic side where you'll be reducing tensions making allies making sure places don't go into civil war uh getting the region stability up getting the region alignment up with the United States, you know, higher, making sure they don't go into crisis, anything the president can do to kind of facilitate that part. And then you have your relations kind of at home, you know, your relations with Congress, your homeland security, the media, uh, are you, are you well approved? How's the economy looking? Do you need to pass any bills? Uh, what are the focus? What do the, the people want? So there's a lot to this game, but essentially it is going through this turn sequence, acting on, on some of these, on some of these books that may happen and seeing what's going on. So it's, you know, a lot of these tables in the books are going to be roll a dice, uh, apply some modifiers and see where you're at on this table. On your turn, you're going to do a lot of the same where you'll have just maybe four actions you'll get to choose. There's always more fires than you can put out, but there's a lot to this game. It's really hard for me to kind of sum it up in uh, two to three minutes, but let's go right into what I thought about the game. Now, first let's talk about the components and the rules and references and the components. Well, this, this box isn't large, but they give you a lot of chits in this game. Five, punch cards worth of stuff. There is so many components in this game. Um, for the price tag, it is up there, but you get two big boards, you know, a ton of chits, a lot of, uh, a lot of manuals. The components, I really do like them, maybe a little bit dry for some, but I find it uh, really top notch. I really enjoy kind of the, just the, the chip manipulation with, you know, that's the neat part about this game is it's it's so overwhelming and you really do feel like the president. Now the rules itself, you know, they're really not that hard. I read a, a lot before the game did come in on what would be described as the governing manual. You know, kind of like a fantasy flight style where they they give you like a streamlined rules, but then they give you this this book that explains a lot of you know, the nuances when you need to look up a question, a lot of them are in this book. That is just an amazing, amazing thing that's added. 
but it's really go through this turn sequence and an, an amazing, just a great thing. I, I just can't, I can't talk highly. This turn sequence book, you can set up the game per the scenario and just go through this, this turn sequence. And each one of these things has a page in the book where you just go down and it tells you what needs to be done. I love that about this game is yes, it's big, but it's very accessible once you kind of get the flow down a little bit. So um, the rules in this game, great. The references also very good. There's a couple times I had to look a few things up, but with a game of this size, that's not really a lot. So let's talk about the setup and table size. The setup took me a little over an hour. Now that is with punching out all these chits. There was a lot to punch out. There really was. I, I got a little bit overwhelmed just punching it out. The setup also was not short. Took me at least probably 30 minutes to set up. I mean, it, it, the, from, from taking this out of the box to when it was ready, maybe about an hour and a half. I just put on some music and started punching out, slowly went through the book, the scenario book for the sandbox and kind of got it set up. Um, this is a game where if you buy the physical version, you need to have a place where you can, where you can keep it, keep it set up. Um, it, it really does take a really long time and it's going to be really hard for you to you can't just put this up. You have to be able to have it set up. Uh, the table size is going to be a full 60 inches by about 25 ish, um, depth wise to get this to the table. But this is a game you have to know if you're going to buy the physical version, you're going to have to leave it on the table for a while. So let's go into the gameplay. And I will say, I have really enjoyed this game. It is right down my alley of just Ameritrash. And like I said, when I say Ameritrash, I mean you have the event deck and you're rolling some dice and looking up tables and random things happen. But I love that. I will, everything is so thematically intertwined that in this game, it just feels right. I love thematic mechanics. I love, you know, random events in the table, all while you can control some of it. There are a ton of, of fires to put out everywhere. You know, you get the diplomatic side, you know, and the, you know, the side kind of taken care of, but then make sure at home that everything's okay. Ensuring that, you know, people just, you know, the missile crisis doesn't get out of hand to tensions not getting too high to regional stability, to, to terrorism, to making sure your cabinet focus. You're like, there are so many things to keep track of in this game, but I love it. It's, I, I love the, the too many fires and not enough actions kind of mentality because that's how probably the president feels uh, going through these events, seeing that the thematic tie in say, you know, tornadoes in the Midwest. I'm in the Midwest, so tornadoes coming through. Well, we have to do some, uh, you know, disaster relief. Do we take care of it now or let it persist? You know, some of those things are just so neat. It's tied to real world things. So if you're in more of a fantasy uh, realm, you may not like this because it is fairly historic. And that's what kind of makes it neat. You can tell the love was put into this game on on just how things tied together. You know, the state of economies can affect uh, certain things. There's a lot of uh, conditional statements. And if you don't know what those are, they're if else statements. If, if Russia's economy is in the dumps and the Russian Federation doesn't really like the US, then they go to action. They say, well, take off, you know, don't look home. We're gonna fight the wars elsewhere. It's just those kind of interactions are just so neat. Uh, keeping allies on the board, military movements. This is essentially a war game. You feel like you're at the war gaming table with the, you know, a diplomacy side with it on, you know, just making sure everything's okay, trying not to have conflicts break out, and then, trying to make sure domestic, you know, we keep our domestic things in check. 
my first game uh i was president well i got shot i almost died but uh i you know the the stability went down we had to go track down a terror group that tried to assassinate me as the president just so fun and thematic and you have traits and you have cabinet members this game is so expansive but they do a great job of walking you through the actions in this game what russia and china do if you don't like looking at tables um then you probably won't won't like this game if you don't like rolling dice and seeing what the table brings you may not like it but for the experienced war gamer or for somebody who just wants to sink their teeth into a heavy gameplay game and can leave this out on the table for a while this game is for you so let me give my final thoughts so this game is amazing i'm just gonna say it however this game is not for everyone the first game took me 15 hours so 15 hours of of play now that was me not knowing some of the things um you know getting to feel but every year you play through four years as president uh four years and i i i stopped i got reelected. it was good good day um but play each year will take you about four hours now what's neat is the turn sequence in this game you can stop at any time go do your thing and come back and your state will still be the same but you're gonna have to leave it on the table if you don't want to play a game that long this is not like a, a big campaign game it's just a single game that is probably 10 to 15 hours just to play when you really think about and dive through your actions in the physical version there is a digital version of the game which kind of streamlines a few things but seeing and playing the game you know away from the computer i really like if you don't have time for a game like this if, if that's too much game i understand that this is not for everyone um you know this isn't like you know the hunger games district trail or the castles of burgundy that i can just pick up you know and play and you know two hours later we're done and packing up this will take you an hour just to get to the table now saying that if you do have space for this game if you do have time to keep this game up this is one of the most thematic games i've ever played you could tell the love in this game when you set it up and get it to the table you can tell how much the designers the creators of this game really put in from the turn sequence books to the actions you can do to when china and russia act your two you know main peers adversaries whatever however you want to label them to all of the charts that you're going to look up you know to this fantasy flight-esque kind of governing manual that that gives you you know references when you get confused scenarios you can play a sandbox scenario which is probably what most people do or you can be a certain president from the years you know uh 2001 to 2020 and actually go through some of the same crises that they go through and you can just tell the love but what's the biggest thing is when you look at this presidential briefing i love when games add this this is the second game i've got this year that's added something like this and you can just feel the appreciation for this game you can tell how much effort went into research designing and it shows in a game like this i know i'm i'm rambling a little bit and i'm into the review but when you get this to the table and see all of the interconnections see the interplay see the thematic mechanics in a board game it's just it's amazing it's awesome and i love it this is not a game who for somebody who wants a dry game who wants everything to be known this is a look things up on the table random events are going to happen you know 
overwhelmingly amount of things, uh, all while trying to, you know, role play ish as the president. So I just want to give a shout out to the, to the game designers, to the developers. Um, I will definitely look more into GMT games. I don't have a lot of their games. I'm not really the biggest war gamer, as many as you know. This is a solo game. Uh, it can be played with multiple people as like a little cabinet, but that's not how this game is, is kind of supposed to be, but it can be. Um, but if you want a long experience on a massive board as you role play kind of as the president, this is the game. Uh, this is probably in there of my top games. I'm afraid though, when I pick this up and put it up, it may be up for a while just because of how hard it is to get it back to the table. Now, for me, like my wife's worked three days in a row. Uh, I've had three days in a row off, so I've been able to play something like this. But in other circumstances, I may not be able to have time. But there's so many neat things, so many drawing of chips, rolling dice, looking at cards, looking up tables, putting out fires. This game is awesome. This game is full of love from the designer. And I just want to say I appreciate that a ton. So this game is not for everyone. This game is probably for the 5% of war gamers who can set up these and focus for 10 to 15 hours. But if you can, you get a great experience in a box. So uh, that's my review of Mr. President. Uh, I know this was kind of a long one and I rambled, but I just wanted to show my appreciation for this great, great game. So I appreciate you guys for watching and until next time.